And for more on this topic, we're now joined by David Swan, Managing Director at Recruitment Company Robert Walters, Japan and Korea. Welcome to the program. It's great to be here. All right, so I think it's fair for us to say that the strength of a country's economy is very much reflected in the country's employment. So let, before we get started, let's look at the basics. I mean, a country's employment market and economic growth, how do they tie in? Well, I think there are two parts to it. The, the first part is a, a quantity aspect. And basically, the more people you have employed producing goods and services in economy, uh, the more growth you'll typically see in that economy. Uh, but it's not just a quantity uh, mm -hmm. issue. I think there are also uh, a lot to do with um, the quality, mm -hmm. uh, meaning innovation and desirability of the, of the goods and services that they're producing that also drive their growth in the economy. All right. Well, looking at Korea's employment figures, they're not looking too good, especially when it comes down to youth unemployment. And there are concerns that the situation in the domestic job market is going to get worse as the country pushes ahead with its aggressive restructuring, corporate restructuring efforts. So what do you make of Korea's labor market right now? Mm, it's an interesting one. Mm -hmm. I think the point to make, firstly, at 3.5 percent unemployment uh, on a global level, that's not considered high. Mm. Uh, however, uh, there are a number of structural problems and I think the government's uh, approach right now to corporate restructuring and a lot of the deregulation mm -hmm. is the right thing to do. Uh, I think there'll be some short-term pain but uh, longer term for the health of the economy uh, I think it, it will benefit uh, the country. Mm, so looking at it in the longer term. That's right. Mm. Uh, but as you mentioned, there are some, some structural problems, particularly with regards to youth unemployment. Uh, I think a lot of that is being driven by an overprotection of uh, permanent senior employees and uh, a, a very rigid uh, age-based seniority salaries system mm -hmm. uh, that I think means that costs uh, will typically go up year on year for companies uh, and they're not able to do anything with underperforming employees. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, uh, I think there's also some problems with the tendency towards uh, Korean candidates to want to work for large, big name right. global companies. And uh, these are the companies that are not necessarily producing the jobs, uh, but um, it's the SMEs where the jobs are and they're less desirable and they're having trouble finding qualified staff. Mm -hmm. And over the past couple of years, we did see a number of multinational firms enter the Korean job market, and I think they did help to provide more jobs, I guess. So what kind of scale and significance are we talking about when we're talking about the, these firms? Well, I think on a global scale, again, it's not large numbers, but what we are seeing, I think, is an increase in the number, the overall number. Uh, 2013 to 2014, there were 48 uh, multinational companies that entered the Korean market. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the majority of these companies are coming from uh, recently China, uh, in particular uh, focused on the uh, uh, insurance and telecommunications sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing slight declines in, in the sort of typical large Western companies that have right. come here in the past. Uh, and But against that, we're also seeing an increase uh, in the number of SMEs, international SMEs mm -hmm. that are coming into the market. So they're increasingly playing a bigger part, I That's guess, right. as time goes yes. on. So aside from the sluggish global economy, I mean, everyone's struggling with unemployment, right? Mm. But what could be some of the biggest fundamental problems in Korea's labor market then? Well, I think it gets back to this overprotection of permanent employees. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when you've got that situation combined with the, the rigid uh, salary schemes mm -hmm. that uh, are based on you know, rises as, as people get older, uh, I think that it makes it very difficult for companies to manage their costs effectively uh, as, as the economy goes through various cycles. Mm -hmm. And so what they tend to do to get around that is to not employ new people right. and to rely very heavily on uh, the short-term low-paid contract market, mm -hmm. which is also a pro an issue. Here right. in Korea. Well, since you are the managing director of Korea and Japan branch of a recruitment company, how does Korea's uh, job market compare to that of Japan? Well, it's interesting. Uh, Japan's population started declining a couple of years ago, and it's got to the point now where uh, there are about two open jobs for every job seeker 
mm. nationwide. Wow. And there are huge mis mismatches between uh, the skills that are available and the skills that are in demand. So mm. there are certain sectors such as construction where there are about six open jobs for every job seeker. Medical doctors about five to one. Uh, engineers four to one. Mm. So uh, it's become a very, very talent short market. Mm -hmm. uh, Korea, on the other hand, is still hasn't reached uh, peak population, hasn't started right. declining. Uh, however, it will start to decline somewhere between 2020 and 2030. So I think in that sense, we'll start to see Korea follow that the, path. The trends, that path mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, we will, <clears throat> that's something that, that is, a, is a, I think, a feature of, of the market. Uh, I think both markets have um, very rigid corporate structures, so there's very, a lot of similarities there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think both markets don't fully utilise the female talent that they have available. Mm. I think Korea's um, youth unemployment situation is probably slightly more severe than Japan's mm. is. Um, however, Korea has, a, in general, a higher level of English mm. than Japan does. Japan. Uh, Korea is currently about the third highest, I think, sorry, eighth highest in, uh, in Asia. Oh, wow. Uh, Japan is third from the bottom. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so uh, that makes it somewhat easier, I think, for companies looking to hire um, bilingual talent here. Mm, so with all those problems, I guess, what are some of the most important factors or issues that stand at the center of Korea's job market right now? And what should the government and the individual do in order to, I guess, overcome these obstacles? Well, I think it, it, the government is, as I mentioned earlier, I think the government is doing the right thing uh, with the restructuring. I think uh, continuing to deregulate mm -hmm. industries, uh, make it easier for free market forces to, to work mm -hmm. uh, and for companies to, to operate here in the Korean market. I think continue to encourage the foreign direct investment that they have been encouraging. Uh, I think they need to provide some level of support for SMEs to make them more attractive to the uh, job seekers that are out there. Uh, and I think they need to encourage uh, younger folks to get more real world experience mm. and perhaps focus a little less on, on academics. the obtaining mm -hmm. academics, that's right. All right, thank you so much for your insight today. You're welcome, it was a pleasure.